presidential candidate and representative Tulsi Gabbard was not on the debate stage because she didn't get onto enough DNC approved polls, which is basically the same thing as saying someone can't get their tumors treated because it wasn't a Philip Morris approved lung cancer. Basically, Representative Gabbard met every unique supporter requirement with ease, and when she arrived on the second debate stage, she tore down DNC darling Kamala Harris by using Kamala Harris. Just just by the virtue of Kamala being Kamala. Tulsi pointed out Kamala's horrific criminal justice record, which, as it turns out, was all criminal and, and no justice at all. There was, like, no justice. Then, as Kamala Harris just ruffled through her papers to look for a comeback, I could see the words Russia and potent puppet form over her head. Okay, they had nothing. So they went with a smear campaign of Tulsi being an Assad apologist. A narrative that time and time again, has been proven to be false. Tulsi Gabbard, who is a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, met with Assad to see if there was a diplomatic and peaceful resolution that would not only be a benefit to the people of Syria, but also the active military personnel fighting another war we shouldn't be. As of right now, America's slogan isn't life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, but arm the world because we win! On the Useful Idiots podcast, Tulsi pointed out that she'd rather be an advocate for peace than a war hawk. You know, Democrats used to, on some level at least, be a little bit less hawkish. Um, and, you know, one of the things that liberals liked about Obama was that he said he would talk to North Korea. Exactly. And all of a sudden we see... And Castro. And Castro, and, right, right. That was a plus, right? Diplomacy. We believed yeah. in diplomacy as opposed to um, strike first. Un ask understanding questions. that the only alternative to diplomacy is war. Right, exactly. That's why it's important. And nowadays you see liberals, the only thing they like about Trump or the only thing they want him to do is ratchet things up. They're yeah. constantly calling on him to do that with Putin, with Syria. Um, which, of course, I don't know what they think the end game is. That's the problem, is they're not thinking of the end game. Right. The question we should be asking is, why are there so many liberals ready to go to war? I mean, wasn't peace the liberal thing to do? But the only time we call Trump presidential is when he's ready to turn a country into a parking lot with the big dick of the American military. I mean, okay, look, his rhetoric... And, and what he says about women and brown people is abhorrent. But dropping those bombs on those brown people, I mean, that's presidential right there, okay? That's that's what presidents do, is, is they, they murder innocent people. I mean, that's why we elected people. Now, look, if you're a loyal Trump supporter, his militaristic approach to the Middle East and the media fawning over his presidential role via warmongering should piss you off. Could Trump ran on a non-interventionist foreign policy plan. He said he was going to put America first, but it seems like now that's a secondary plan to fucking over seven countries to line the pockets of the fossil fuel and war industries. Recently, he tweeted out that, that, that the American military is locked and loaded, and he's waiting for the Saudis to tell him how to use the American military and enact a regime change war in Iran. Tulsi called him out for being Saudi Arabia's bitch. I'm waiting for the corporate media to completely miss the point and go off and lose their shit about how she used that naughty word. How dare she uses the B word instead of propping up the W word. War! We need war! I mean, can we really expect any more from the propaganda wing of the American war economy? Even when it comes to drone warfare, she's got a pretty measured response to the large responsibility we have to use this technology as weapons. There are many different tools and weapons that our military has that should only be used uh, 
that should only be used to to defeat an enemy and to defeat a threat that threatens our safety and our security. I think that some folks out there would object to using drones at all. Just uh, for example, Medea Benjamin uh, wrote about a killing by remote control, saying that you know, kind of, uh, it doesn't really convey you know the, the full impact of of the lives that that these drone pilots are taking you know when when they're using them. Um, do you think that that's a, a legitimate concern? I think it is a concern, but it is not dissimilar to um, the same concern that we have with with pilots who are flying in planes and and the same impact that are had that that's had when uh, when bombs are dropped. Um, so I, I think this is um, this is a bigger issue for us to look at that whether it is an unmanned plane or if it is a manned plane, the impact and the result uh, is the same. So we have to be very careful with very clear objectives on how and when and where these weapons are used. Now, I'm against using this technology for warring purposes because it's pretty clear that we don't know how to use it. But I still understand Tulsi's point of view, even though this is an issue I disagree with her on. Look, drone warfare under Obama increased killing Americans, and drone warfare under Bezos would kill even more Americans by shooting consumerism through every household window. But weaving a false narrative is all they have against Tulsi Gabbard. The Harris camp didn't even come out to make a statement that they had changed their views on criminal justice reform, but rather just kept deflecting it. Right? Look, Kamala Harris stands for the prison industrial complex. Also, clearly, she has a, a hawkish way of contributing to the American war economy with these smears. <laughs> 